Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bosch KJAP. More importantly, KE Jetronic, which is, you know, your later ones, KJAP, KE. So I've done a CO base setting on KJAP. Now we're going to do one on KE Jetronic, which is slightly more complex. A um, couple of basic settings because they do, the systems do work differently. So We'll move you closer over so you can see what we're looking at. I'll show you the differences of how it operates um, and then we'll run through where it should be at a base setting. So let's move you in closer. So let's have a recap of KJAT. So plop. Let's bring our model over here. So as we can remember, setting CO2 on KJET. Remember, three mil allen key in there. You adjust this that way, more fuel, that way less fuel. And obviously the air plate rests on its spring down in there. So you bend the clip. So the air plate sits there. Then we adjust this, which puts the force on the pin, which again moves the pin up to deliver X amount of fuel at idle. Now that's pretty simple. And let's move on to KE. Jetronic. So, I should have cut this one more apart, but it's quite awkward because I wanted to show all this. So, K, you won't see much. That's why we've got a second of demonstration. Uh, yeah. So, KE Jetronic works slightly different. Now, we have still got our three mil Allen key in the top of there to adjust it. Now, is that adjusting fuel mixture? No, it's not. It is adjusting a plate height. So first off, let's look at plate height. Now, the plate height is obviously, this is your plate and you can see it's quite pronounced here. This bit below that line, that is your vertical cylindrical point. Now on KE units, this plate, that gap there, from the point it starts tapering away to there, measuring it from this angle here, closest to the point of the distributor, needs to be 1.9 mil from that plate to there, plus 1.1 mil. Now that gets confusing. Well, what if it's 1.9 mil? Why is it 1.1 mil? We'll come on to that later. But if we focus on that gap needs to be 1.9 millimetres. Now let's move on to another part. So once we've got this off, we need to measure the gap in here. Now the gap sits between the roller in there and the mounting point. Now be very careful measuring it when it says mounting point because if you put a flat edge across there Lift that up, All right, you've got a good mill of gap there. Now, you can get a depth caliper, which is handy for these. Now, with our air plate at 1.9 millimetres, looking right, this roller needs to be 18.8 millimetres specified on top of the roller to the mounting point. And obviously this one's well off, which is reading 22 mil. So that's well off. So how do we adjust that? That's when our three mil Allen key comes in. So again, we're doing it clockwise. If your car's off this far, then you've got a big problem, but this is a demonstration. So, not on there, we're looking at 19, right. 18.8 plus a bit. So we're at 19 mil there. So we have got our roller gap to our mounting point where we want it. Now, Switch back fire to our air plate, right in there. Again, get a ruler, pop it in there. So we're looking at 1.5 mil. Obviously this is all sticky and stuff, but. All right, one point, no, 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 there we go. Yeah, 1.9 mil, so that hasn't changed. But if it has, so you've got your 18.8 mil there. If that has then changed, you then need to go on the bottom of here and there should be a screw in there with a lock nut under the lock nut. 
that changes the tension on this spring in there, which resets your plate height. So, quick summary. 18.8 mil from the top of that roller to the mounting surface here. Once that is there, and then you've got 1.9 mil from the plate to that point there, that's the air plate at basic setting. So this is our KE Jetronic metering head. Now it's slightly different because there's a whole bigger hole in there and you've got a lot longer nose on the end of there. And also, these have a bottom seal sitting in there, your normal filter, normal seals, and you notice there is no top seal compared to the K jets. And there's a reason for that. In the bottom of here, you'll find one of these. This sits on top of there, pop, sits in there like that. Now, why has it got a rubber seal on it? Well, this is where our measurements come in. You'll have the bottom of that, then you'll have a cap like this. That spins on there, I just put it on there, because we can show the adjustment in a minute. Do, 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 do. About there, right, so, now we've got that on there. So, that's how these look. You have got some early K jets which are like this, but that gets a bit different. We'll just focus on the KE units. So, this can adjust. So we've got a threaded portion, threaded on the body, and then this can turn. There is a special tool for it. It does turn around either way. And there's a reason it turns around the easel. Easy, easy. There's a reason it turns around both ways, in and out. Now that coincides with your KE Jetronic differences. So on KJet, you've got your CO adjusting on 3mm Allen key, which adjusts your actual fuel difference. This is what adjusts your fuel difference at idle. So the last one we deal with is our actual measurement that adjusts the CO, the fuel on idle. And it is this gap between here and the top of here. So if it will focus on, probably won't, but there you go. So this gap here between the shoulder and the top of this adjusting should be 0.6 mil. So now we can put our fuel distributor back on again. It's the same one there, but obviously it's a bit mangled and old. This is an old spare unit. So we'll walk that back on there. We'll connect our fuel line back up. Good for about negative 0.5 bar of fuel pressure. So our metering head is on there. So 18.8 mil in there, 1.9 mil on here, and now this is sat there. Now what you need to do is make sure everything is all plumbed up, all your fuel lines, and you need to pressurise the fuel system. So run the pump, you know, cycle the ignition a couple of times until you've got system pressure in there. Then what you want to do is measure the free play on here before it touches the actual fuel pin, which is an air gap. Now cycle back to this one while there's a seal in the bottom. So ignition on, that fuel pin gets pushed from the top by the control pressure and that rests on that seal at the bottom. Now let's pull it back out so I can show you. Ping. So again we've got a seal in there. So the fuel pin when it's pushed down that section there rests on here and seals. So if your seal's gone, firstly fuel's going to leak out the bottom. And let's put the cap back on. So back we are. Now 18.8, 1.9, now we need to check the free play. So with this ignition fueled up and you've got fuel pressure in the system, moving this plate, you should not be able to, you should do, just be with the old tweezers here, repair pliers, you should be able to lift that plate and it should not move any more than half a mil before you can feel it touching this point here. So the all important settings. So we want to be looking at CO content 
of 0.2 to 1.2%. With everything all plugged on, all heat cycled, everything working. Now, if we are getting not enough or too much, so if we are getting, you know, 0% or more than likely you're getting, you know, 2.5% CO or 4 or 8 or, you know, more, more chance of these going rich than they are lean. So, for example, we are working between 0.2 and a 1.2% CO. Now, we are currently at a 4% CO. Way too much. So how do we rectify this? We need to adjust this here. So simply turn it. Now, anti-clockwise removes fuel. Clockwise adds fuel. I'll show you how in a minute. So we've taken it off. We've turned this, you know, half a turn anti-clockwise. We should decrease the amount of fuel. And then we bolt this back on, obviously with the top on it. Run the car up again and check our CO and note the difference in it. So if you've now dropped from a 4% to a 3%, you know half a turn on here has dropped 1% and so forth. So you adjust it working off there. It's quite awkward, you've got to take it off and adjust it. Now, why does turning that add or increase fuel? I'll show you. So remembering we've got our tiny fuel slits inside here. A little black line which is 0.2 mil in thickness. So this is our fuel pin and our fuel body. Now the top of this is pretty much exactly the length of the fuel slit at the top. Now we are sat here and we have our 0.6 mil adjustment and we want to adjust it to give for example more fuel at idle. So we are screwing the adjuster in to give more fuel. So how does that work? Well, we've screwed it in here, which means the rest point of this, remembering that that is where the pin rests, as you can see there. So we're adjusting it in. So it means that's pushing that pin higher. Obviously, I'm going to exaggerate the movement here because you need to. So we adjust it in half turn, which has pushed the pin up. What's that done? That's then uncovered those slits even more. So screwing it in uncovers the slits, more fuel. Screwing it out allows the control pressure to push that pin that bit further down, closing off the fuel ports, removing fuel, or lowering your CO. So that's how these adjustments work. So to recap, to get the whole system, we have got four settings we want to focus on these aren't just made up they're in throughout the you know i've got a lot of vw um, publications audi publications on the settings of what they should be um so we're here get the distributor off you're looking for your 18.3 mil from the base of the on top of the roller to your mounting point once you've got that there you are then looking to adjust your air plate to have 1.9 mil between the air plate and the top of the vertical section and then you're looking at 0.6 mil between the shoulder and the top of there. Once you've got those, put it all back on, pressurise the system. You know, you want at least a good 10 seconds to get all the system pressure up to happy as it should be. And then you want to be lifting that plate. You can with your fingers, lift it, and you'll feel it touch the bottom of the fuel pen. You'll feel it contact this. As soon as it comes with any resistance, you don't want that distance being more than half a mil. If it is more than that, then you adjust your three mil Allen in there clockwise to reduce it, anti-clockwise to give more free play. So 18.8, 1.9, 0.6, and 0.5 mil. Once you're all at there, and then run the car up, get through a heat cycle, nice and warm, and then you want to check your CO with you know some form of calibrated, whether it's an MT station or an AFR gauge, you know, convert the difference over. I'd stick to a focus on a 1.2 to 1.5% because you've got a lot more um, influence on these systems. So you don't need to adjust it as much as you will with a cage at to get that performance in it. If you want performance, we can come onto that later date. So again, you've got those four settings and you're too rich. If you're too rich, you want to be turning this anti-clockwise, which moves that down, which means the pin can 
move away from the slip more, giving less fuel. If you're too lean, again, you want to turn that clockwise, which again pushes that pin up, which kind of covers more of the split, slit even. Again, you've got to pop that off, adjust it, put it back on. After any adjustment, make sure you've got your free play still, so make your adjustment, pressurise it all again. Yep, still got half a mil. Um, up to a mil is probably, I know you can have up to three mil, but you know, half a mil is one it. I'd stick half a mil to a mil any more than that, then you want to start adjusting it. So there you go. Hope that's helpful for people with the KE Jetronic units. They are very complex. They are back to front and they work differently, but they are probably a more reliable than a cast iron unit because the aluminium doesn't really corrode much. You can pull cast iron units away and they are disgusting. You can pull some of these apart. This has just been pulled apart and it's, I mean, yeah, the filter's blocked up, but it's pretty clean inside there. So anyway, I won't digress. That is your basic CO setting on a KE Jetronic. So thanks for watching. You can click subscribe, any comments, welcome down below. Always happy to help. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for watching, bye.